Info Factory Track LN Shop Floor Operator Mode. The concept is that multiple screens are dotted around the shop floor. Each of these have already been logged into shop floor and are waiting for employees to log themselves in to use. They can log in either by using biometrics such as fingerprints or by entering employee number and PIN number login. Once the employee has logged in, they're likely to see a dispatch list. This will first of all show any jobs that have been assigned to them. It will also show other jobs by resource group. Resource group in this case is a work center. If we're using service orders or work orders, then the resource group would be the service department. We can restrict access to resource group by employee or user so that they can only start jobs in specific work centers or departments. And in order to start a job, they click on the start button and optionally add a machine and specify whether they're doing setup or process. Once the job has been started, they will see it on their active task form. This shows the jobs the operator is currently running. We use it to report quantities against the operation and we can use it to stop the job. We also allow employees to record indirect tasks. They select this from the menu option, select the appropriate task and hit the start button. When they start an indirect task, we have the option to automatically stop any existing jobs for that operator. If permissions allow, we can also allow operators to move teams. Again, they select from the menu options the team move button. They can use this to join a team if they're not currently in a team, or to leave a team if they are currently a member of a team. This also provides them with an option to join a new team if necessary. When an operator leaves a team, it will automatically stop any job that that team is running for that operator. Similarly, when an operator joins a team, it will automatically start any job that that team is currently running for that operator. We also allow operators to create teams on the fly if they have the necessary permissions. Again, we select it from the menu options and create a new team. This creates a team with the, de with the default name and with the job or jobs that the operator was currently working on. At this point, the only member of the team is this operator, but other operators can now join that team and start on those jobs as well. At any point, an operator can see the task details by clicking on the line in either the active task or dispatch list form. This has a number of tabs showing the operation overview, the operation list for that particular order, any assignments have been made by the supervisor for that operation, it shows the non back flush materials required and allows the operator to issue the materials if necessary shows any documents that are linked to that operation, allows us to report the quantities against the operation, to capture any as-built serial numbers if the item is serial controlled, and to capture byproducts. Now let's have a demonstration. When an employee walks up to a terminal on the shop floor, it should have a screen which looks like this. If biometrics are turned on, then we can follow the instructions. Otherwise, in this case, I'm just going to enter the operator number. At this point, I don't have pin numbers turned on, so I didn't need to do this. By default, it will display the dispatch list. So this shows me all jobs which have either been assigned to the operator, which always show at the top of the form, or any other jobs for that particular work center. If I select a different work center, I will still see the assigned jobs, they will always show up, but I will see other jobs that relate to that particular work centre, if there are any. In this case, we haven't got any. The only jobs we have belong to work centre 2. It's now 8.15, I'm going to start this job. I'll select the second one. And when I select it, I can optionally say I'm using a machine or not, and I can say whether it's performing setup or not. In this case, I'm just going to start it without a machine and not a setup. So as we can see, by default, it now comes up with the active task screen. 
I can switch back to the dispatch list if I wanted to start another job, if this operator is going to work on multiple jobs. So for instance, if I start this job at the same time, then my active task list shows me two jobs. So it shows me the PR77 and PR78. So let me just advance the time to nine o'clock. Obviously, we would not normally expect the operators to be able to change the time. If I click anywhere on one of these jobs, then I will see all the details associated with the job. And I can see the overview, which shows for this particular order and operation, this is how many are ordered, completed, rejected, and so on. I can see any other operations which are associated with that order. In this case, it's the only one. I can see which uh, operators have been assigned to this job. In this case, it's just me because I logged in as Paul Davis, who is 30152. I can see all materials that need to be issued to this particular job. I can see any documents via IDM that are linked either to the item or to the order number or to the operation. I can use this to report quantity. If it was serial controlled, I could actually record the serial numbers that I'm using. In this case, it's not a serial controlled item. I can record any byproducts. So if in the manufacturing of this item, I happen to produce some other item, I can record that. So I'm going to look at this particular item and I'm going to click on the report button. If I click on the report button, it takes me to the same series of tabs, but now it allows me to report quantities. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to report a quantity of one. Now, because this is the final operation, it's the only operation, it now expects me to actually report it into inventory. So not only am I reporting one complete here, but I'm actually going to report it into inventory. And I can select the location. I can create a lot or get the system to generate me a lot. This will create me a lot and allow me to print a label for it. I can either print the labels manually or automatically. So now, as you can see, I have previously I'd reported eight complete, now I've reported nine. If I wanted to, I could reject things as well. I can also, if I go here, I can issue material if I wanted to. So if I select this item and I say, right, I'm going to issue, say yes to a partial pick. So I'll report two more complete, uh, two more to issue. So now if I go back to my materials, I can see I've issued four, I've still got six to issue. So this is a list of the expected items for this particular operation. In LN, we have to make sure that we've initiated inventory issue before this can take place. I can also stop this job. So I'm saying, all right, I've finished working on it. I'm not calling the operation complete. I'm just saying I'm no longer working on it. So if I now go back to my indirect tasks, I can see now that I have only the one job that I'm still working on, which I've been working for 45 minutes. Other options I can do here, I can select an indirect task and say I'm going to start working for an indirect task. And do I want to stop the current task? If I say yes to that, then that will mean that that is the only task that is running because it's automatically stopped the previous job I was on. Similarly, I can do a team move. If I have permission, I can actually go ahead and join team B. So that will automatically stop me working my indirect task. So it's automatically stopped it. If the team had been working on any job, it would have shown it because the team wasn't working on any job. I'll now start this at 9.30 again. And I'm saying I'm starting it for the team. So that means I'm starting it not only for myself, but for anybody else who happens to be part of that team. So here I'm showing that this is, uh, I started this job at 9.30. Uh, it's now 10 o'clock, so I've been working 30 minutes, but I'm working on it as Team B. Uh, so anybody else who's a member of Team B would also show as being active on this task. I can then use Team Move because it's actually part of that team. I can just say I'm going to leave that team at that point. And what we'll see there is it will kill the active task because I'm no longer part of that team any team job I was working on at that point will be stopped. So now I'm not currently working on anything and I need to select a new job to, to start working on. The final thing which I can do as an operator, if necessary, is 
I will start this job at 10 o'clock. And now let's say it's 10.30. What I will do is I'll create a new team. So I'll say, yes, I want to create a new team and confirm it. And it creates a team. And this is based on the year, uh, the month, the day, and the time. So in this case, it's 2021 is the year, 01 is the month, 19 is the day, and 10.15 is the current time. So it creates a temporary team. And the idea now is that so I am 30152. So if I wanted to, if I log out of here, so I'm logging off this system and I'm going to log in as a different employee. So I've lo I log in as, three, as employee 30153. I can now join that team. So if I go and join that particular team, which is the one I just created, then that will create and it automatically starts me on that job as well. So now on that team, not only is uh, Paul Davis working on it, but Melda Sanchez is as well. That's the way the team logic works. And now if it's now 11 o'clock, I can stop working on this job. And when I stop, I can either stop it on behalf of the team or I can just stop it on behalf of myself. If I stop it on behalf of myself, it will stop me working on that job, but it won't stop Paul Davis working on that job. So if I say I'm gonna stop it for myself, so I say, am I stopping it for the team? No, I'm stopping it for myself. Then that will take me off the team. If you notice, Imelda Sanchez is not part of that team anymore. And if I log back in as 152, so Paul Davis, I should see that he is still active on that team. He's the only member of that team, but he's still active on it. Because Imelda Sanchez, when she stopped working on it, left the team at that point. So that completes this overview of the capabilities of the operator mode in ShopFloor.